Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. Sitting inside of me is my co-host, Alex. How you doing? I'm doing good. If you didn't know, this is a podcast that has break down the previous week in gaming. We sit it down, chat it out, go over the news, maybe a topic or two. Check us out on all of our podcast services and YouTube every Friday. That's how you get the free stuff if you're a freeloader. Don't worry, we are too. Stick around, give the five stars, the likes, the thumbs ups, and all of the places. Uh, uh, that always helps. That helps us immensely. If you enjoy what we do here, please support us over on patreon.com slash easyachievers. <clears throat> Check out our socials, Twitter, at EVM9000. For myself, at Crazy Flip Skater for Mr. Alex over there. Let's get into this week. It's slight preview of the news. We got some crazy stuff today. Yeah. We got uh, Telltall rising from the dead as uh, Phoenix rises Ooh. from the ashes. Uh, we have some new Fortnite stuff. And we've got some... Oh, gay bottle stuff going on. More on that later. But first, Alex, I have a burning question. Mm. What you been playing? Control. Yes, we have. We've been playing Control. I was giving a little, you know, a little, a little. Uh, this will be like our first impressions of Control, yeah. and then uh, we will be doing a spoiler cast, <clears throat> which will most likely be public. I'm not sure yet. Kind of want to do it public. We can. We'll talk about it. Later. Yeah, we'll see. We'll talk about it later. Control. Yep. I want to I want to sum it up very clearly for people if you've played Alan Lake and Quantum Break, which rhyme I just realized. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's as weird as Alan Wake, and you have the powers from Quantum Break. Pretty much, that's essentially what Control yeah. is. I'm in the very early stages. I'm what probably two or three hours in <clears throat> right now. Alex, how far are you? Off the top I'm of probably head? about. You're like an hour probably ahead. An of hour, me, hour ahead of you. An hour, hour and a half. Say. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. I'm having yeah, fun. I'm having fun. If with you it. like action, if you like... Guys, I'm telling you, it's weird. But yeah, I like, it I is, like it. there's a lot going on. I like I like it's weird. And hey, they throw you in there. There is no uh, explanation. Yeah. They just put you in there. I actually, <laughs> they put you in there. I actually got to a part where I died for the first time. Really? Yeah. There was a... Th- something happens yeah. to where uh, you have to do this uh, this mission, and it looks right. like it's timed because like mm-hmm. a clock starts, and it starts mm-hmm. going down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, crap. I need to get to that area. So I go to that area, and I didn't realize that the people were a little stronger. Mm-hmm. And um, as I was killing, I had to kill four targets, apparently. Mm-hmm. I killed one, and then like a bunch of other people started shooting me, oh. and uh, I died. I wasn't yeah. even paying attention. I was like, God. I'm enjoying the combat so far. No, yes, I have the telekinesis. Yes. That's really nice. That's shown off in the trailer. Yes, so that's yes. I think, of course. No spoilers here. But yeah. telekinesis, I feel super strong. I can't wait to that it, to be expanded on. Yeah. The actual object of power that you use is awesome too. Your main weapon. Yeah. Um, that's cool. I'm interested in the story. Mm-hmm. Like they already got my hooks in me, so I'm like, all right. So what's this? Yeah. What's this here? What's this? I wonder what this piece is there. Who's this janitor fella? What's going on with this Dude, guy? He's oh. <laughs> He's well, interesting. He's I'm, a little creepy. I'm, I, I can't wait to uh, see more about him. Yeah. Um, Apex, plus, Fortnite as well. Do what? Apex and Fortnite. I'm just saying. Oh, for, yeah, for, yeah, the, yeah. for the listener, Apex, yep. Fortnite, like always. Yep. I mean, I'm actually going to go back and because uh, as I'm playing Control, I'm going to go back and play some um, Batman because I've been just I've been watching all those uh, movies on the DC Universe yeah. streaming service. So I watched Batman. Hush. Yeah, I just watched Hush. Mm-hmm. That was good. Yeah, it's good. Um, but it's making me want to play it. So I'm going back, and especially since it, they have those uh, Microsoft rewards, you can yeah. you can get points for you that. Get points so. just for playing the game. Yep, you get that done too. Alex, what's up? Over on GameDaily.biz, Telltale Games raises from the dead with a renewed dedication to creativity and sustainable business. As we should call it, Phoenix Rise Tales. I don't okay, know. yeah, I can, yeah. yeah, okay, I see where that's going. Yeah, Jamie right. Otley <laughs> and Brian Waddle, Waddle? Yeah, Brian Waddle, has successfully included their business necromancy training and revived a Telltale uh, tell Games brand, mostly. At least sat down with Game Daily to talk about the uh, arduous process. In September of last year, the industry watched in horror as Telltale Games sharded its sharp declination. Uh, yeah, declination into implosion. At first, there was little hope the skeleton crew would remain, and it wasn't long after that Telltale went into assignment, which is a bit different than bankruptcy, and the company was gutted. Most of Telltale's illustrious and overworked crew has moved into uh, onto other things, but Jamie Atley and his business partner, uh, Brian Waddle, refused to let good games die. Quote, we dug in. 
and took a look and nosed around. Uh, Otley noted during our conversation, quote, the more we looked at it, the more we kind of went, hey, this is a good business. This is a viable business, and it seems like we're under the right conditions. This could be stood back up, and we can continue to join Telltale Games, like game makers tell stories. This is a very interesting read by Game Theory Up mm-hmm. is. Uh, they give interesting insights on what they're uh, trying to do with the Telltale brand. Um, I think this is a, a good way of summing it up right here. Quote, this is there a huge fan base of Telltale players. And that's one of the main reasons we decided to make this investment, uh, said Brian Wilde. It's hard to see your favorite games disappear or not get sequels they deserve. So we thank everyone for their patience and support. We've got some exciting things to share soon. We'll try not to keep them waiting too long, but we think fans will be pleased. Um, this goes way much, much more into depth. Uh, you can give that a read on GameDaily.biz. It's an f- interesting article. You can see why they would buy it and why they're interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um I want to bring that up, and I want to also to bring up a counterpoint because I find I find it very rare in the games industry that we see counterpoints to other articles because mm-hmm. most of the time people just kind of agree with each other. Yeah. So we're gonna move over to Kotaku by Mr. Jason Schreier, a episode favorite, I guess podcast favorite is what you call him. We love Jason Schreier here. Yeah, we Two do. people who didn't work at Telltale Games say they're bringing back Telltale Games. Telltale Games is back. Well, at least the name is. A group of investors announced plans today to revive the iconic studio which shut down last September. Although with the company staff having scattered to the winds, this seems less like a revival and more like one of Clementine's enemies. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Today, Jamie Otley and Brian w- uh, Waddle, two men who did not work at Telltale Games, told press that they secured the rights to the company's name and some of its licenses and that they will be reviving the company in Malibu, California. The original one was located in San Rafael, California, which is 400 miles northwest. <clears throat> Otley's background is in mobile license development, Duck Dynasty, and Power Rangers. Great games, right? Hey, man. <laughs> While Water worked at an outsourcing company, uh, Virtuous, and the physics software maker, Havoc. The money for this venture is coming from the publisher called Athlon Games, a subsidiary of the Chinese video game holding company, Leo, as well as the group of executives who have worked for game publishers like Rebellion and Starbreeze. In other words, a bunch of people are taking a familiar, beloved name and slapping it on something brand new. Telltale Games, of course, was the company responsible for the critic acclaim adventure game The Walking Dead and Tales from the Borderland before unexpectedly closing in September 2018. And what people who worked at the old Telltale Games? Polygon spoke to Otley, who told them, and I'm quoting Polygon here, quote, that some workers from the original Telltale Games will be offered freelance roles with full-time positions possible in the future. Of course, given that Telltale staff were unceremoniously fired last September without severance and were left scurrying to find new jobs, many of them have gone elsewhere, but it's nice to know that those who didn't find employment or are looking to return to the shambling course of Telltale may find full-time positions possible in the future. Ollie also told Polygon that they plan to resell some of the old Telltale games, many of which have been delisted from digital stores, and try to continue making new ones. It remains unclear just how many of Telltale's staff who work with this new company in Malibu. Headlines across the internet this morning have declared that Telltale Games is back, but as always, it's important to remember that brands don't make video games. People do. Mm-hmm. And this reboot of Telltale Games has enough red flags to set off a rodeo. Interesting take. From Mr. Jason Schreier. Mm-hmm. I tend to believe just about everything here is. These, these two gentlemen seem to be interested to bring back Tail Talk. But again, actions speak louder than words. So I'll be interested to see what they're actually going to do. Um, I think they can start by re-enlisting the games like they said, right? They want to undelist the games that they already have and resell them. And then they can work on the games that were promised. Maybe they go back to see if they can get Wolf Among Us back to yes. season two maybe batman they said they got some licenses we know for a fact they don't have walking dead because well, we don't assume that ended so i mean well they don't have walking dead because it went back to skybound skybound Studios. yeah yeah so they have it now uh well they i assume they got wolf among us maybe they still have borderlands yeah maybe they still have um batman batman possibly if, if, possibly game of thrones i don't know though I don't think so. I, I don't, don't think, think they. Ever, I don't think they ever planned on making a second one. No, no. I don't think. I don't think that was ever in the plans. Okay. Because I don't think it sold that well. Yeah. What do you think of all this? Um. I mean, honestly, I I I don't mind. I mean, yeah. as long as they do make it, uh, they do it, they do it, uh, it justice. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as they don't screw it up or anything or make it. I mean, I just don't. I'm wondering if they're gonna keep this. If they do do it. If they're going to keep it the same art style, if they're going to completely change it and just like, I wonder what they're going to do. With the, it. It's the waiting game now, right? Games yeah, just take a long time. So yeah. now we just kind of wait and see. All right, well, let's see if this will be good. We don't know yeah. yet. So 
I guess we'll we'll see in probably two to three years what they plan on doing. They said freelance roles. I assume now they, if they want to make mm-hmm. games, they have to now hire people. And this is even more money aside from buying Telltale. They have to now employ people to make the video games. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe they'll just go straight mobile <clears throat> from now on, and there won't be any more console games. Maybe, or maybe they go straight to mobile and then slowly get money from that. Mm. Interesting. We will see. I'm gonna call it right now. Okay. In a couple of years, maybe uh-huh. two, okay. maybe threes from now, Uh huh. we'll see darkness, and we see a, a cigarette light, mm-hmm. and then you see Big B, mm-hmm. just light, and just and, and it's just going to be Walking Dead season two, or Walking Dead. Walking Dead season two. That would be surprising. You're right. That would be surprising. Crossover. <laughs> uh, Wolf Among Us season yeah. two. Okay. I, I'm, hey, I'm down for it. I will believe it when I see it. You know it. how long we've been waiting for that, dude? We've been waiting for a very long time. <sighs> yeah, I'm excited. Hey, man, like I said, as long as they do good by it, I don't mind. Keep it. I Am Fury Studio apologizes for sexist and transphobic <laughs> comments by staff. <laughs> this is over over you are gamer by Wesley Winpole. The developer of recent, uh, recently released old-school first-person shooter Ion Fury has apologized after some of his staff were found to have made sexist and transphobic comments online and homophobic language was discovered in the game itself. Voidput came under fire over the weekend after recent era user 25,000 brought to light sexist and transphobic comments made by the staff in Iron Fury's official Discord. <laughs> Among the raft of comments criticized in the post from a developer who goes by the name Terminix, uh, something I don't really understand about the social justice stuff is that they have stuff like the slut walk, which I thought was about the right to be the right to not be harassed for how they dress, but then if you portray women dressed the same way, you get shit for it. Uh, that's a direct quote. The official void point to Twitter page then doubled down, suggesting that Discord comments were taken out of context because they'd been photoshopped. Interesting. Uh, Later, homophobic language was found in Iron Fury itself. Reset era user Flapjack21 found a room in the game uh, accessed using a no clip cheat that displayed the word fag bag. Yikes. Uh, in other easily accessible rooms are what look like hand soap bottles with a homophobic slur O-Gay written on it. Interesting. Eurogamer contacted publisher 3D Realms boss Mike Niesel for comment. Niesel said, moving forward, all of 3D Realms contracts will include terms that will allow us to sever a relationship if a contractor does not abide by our zero tolerance policy for hate speech. Here's the statement in full. We're going to go over this full statement, and then we're going to go over the Kind of retraction that happened after this. <laughs> Quote, it has some t- come to our attention full point. The developers Iron Fury have been accused of making transphobic and misogynist statements. Quote, under current leadership, 3D Realms have taken pride empowering marginalized groups, as evident by our strong female protagonist, Shelly Bombshell Harrison, and the makeup of our team. Moving forward, all 3D Realms contracts will include terms which allow us to sever relationships if a contractor does not abide by our zero tolerance policy for hate speech. Eurogamer has also contact with Wallpoint co-founders Evan Ramos and Richard uh, Gobley for comment. They responded with a statement of their own, apologizing for the sexist and transphobic comments and the homophobic language in our fury. Voidpoint also vowed to add mandatory sensitive training for all employees and cranch actors and said it will donate $10,000 from Iron Fury's release date proceeds to the Trevor product, an American nonprofit focused on suicide pre- uh, prevention efforts in the LGBTQ community. Finally, the developer said it will patch out any unacceptable language in the game. There's a, a, couple, a full statement about that. I'm not going over that. That's just a reiteration of what was just said. Now, that is the original story, Alex. We now have the update to this story. This is over by a Rebecca Valentine and Gay News Shop Biz again. Okay, this is the update. Wasn't this, uh, sorry, the please the Ion Fury. Yes. Is this the one that they were talking about that Iron Maiden was suing them because of the name or something like that? It, was, they, it used to be called Ion Maiden or something like that? I think so, actually. Okay, uh, yeah, because I was, want, go look I was at, listening look at, do to a quick Google. I don't another know. podcast. Sorry, but, Bing. My, I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> and I believe they were used to be called Ion Maiden, and then they were uh, Iron Iron the Maiden. The band was suing them or something like that. Yeah, so yeah look that up. It. That's definitely cool. If it is, it's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the story. Iron Fury retains controversial in-game content after all. Um, uh, <laughs> update Fa- facial cl- cleanser name is in slur is out company still donating to Trevor Project and mandating sensitive training. okay this is an update a series of tweet by the official boy foot twitter account following the official statement this morning indicates that the homophobic slur in Iron Fury has been removed from the game 
In response to a question about the slur, which was hidden into the developer room in game, Voidpoint replied, "This that is a quote a legitimate error made by a developer who doesn't even live in an English-speaking country. It wasn't a joke, political statement, or anything else. I asked him if it would be offensive in his country. He said no. I believe him. He removed it." End quote. So that's an interesting point. He takes it out stating that this is a error no one put this in there the person who did this doesn't even speak english so he probably didn't even know what he was putting there we're going to move on to the rest of the story another tweet also pushed back against the company's pr statement from last week saying that the pr company responsible added an entire extra sentence to our original apology statement that made tons of customers think we were censoring the whole game finally another tweet confirmed that void point will still be donating to the trevor project as promised when asked for comment and clarification 3d realm sent over the following statement Quote, we at 3D Realm spoke with Voidpoint today and reaffirmed their commitment to honoring their original statement, including a donation to the Trevor Project and sensitivity training. However, the soap bottle will not be removed. The use of the word fag bag in an area that was inaccessible without hacking in the game and was added by one developer without approval from anyone else was removed a few days ago. We once again apologize for this text and does not reflect the values of 3D Realms or Voidpoint. Joe said this expense of marginalized communities will not be present in future games published by 3D Realms. However, a portion of our community made it loud and clear they felt removing OK was censorship and should be protected by free speech. Voidpoint wanted to listen and we respected this decision. And then it goes into the original story basically of going over this again, going through everything that's going on, and think people think they're being censored. This is all very convoluted story and it's all really about a word in a game. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, I was about to say, I found an article about it, if you were still interested in it. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the ar- article is on Polygon. It's by uh, ONS Good. Mm-hmm. It's Iron Maiden is suing 3D Realms over Iron. Yep. So it's Ion thing. Maiden. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. So they have uh, changed the name. Yeah. Iron Maiden claims ga- game Ion Maiden rips off its name and logo. The heavy metal band Iron Maiden is suing the former owners of the Duke Nukem IP over Iron Ion Maiden, a first-person shooter that launched on Steam Early Access February 2018. Yikes. Ion Maiden developed in the 24-year-old build engine that first ran Duke Nukem 3D is uh, canonical follow-up. Canonical. Thank you. Canonical, whatever. <laughs> I can't read today. Yeah, you're good. Follow up to Bombshell, which launched in 2016. Yeah. This game began life as Duke Nukem Mass Destruction until 2014. Lawsuit forced 3D Realms to invent a new character and storyline. The developer ultimately had to start a new game over, a new game, uh, game over from scratch. Iron Maiden's holding company filed the lawsuit in California federal, federal court on Tuesday, alle- alle- alleging trademark infringement, both in the riff of the band's name and the stylized logo presenting it. While the band's namesake is a, is a torture device, some say uh, apocryphal. That's what it Epoc- looks like. Apocryphal. Apocryphal. P h a l. A p o c r y p h a l. Yeah, hip 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 Like uh, yeah. like you're being a hypocrite. But gotcha. Yeah. From medieval times, its logo and particularly the steel cut typeface usually it's been registered in the United States since 1984. So yeah, it's pretty much they were taking, they yeah, were copying gotcha. them. Yeah, they just copied. So they, they probably, to to they Iron probably Fury. like tried to. Inst- it, yeah, it, it, it looks very similar. Yeah, yeah. They probably were like, let's make it look like that, and it will be cool because it will be like Metallica. And they're like, no, that's illegal, and that. Oh, yeah. whoops. Ooh, Jesus! It says Iron Maiden's complaint asks for two million in statutory damages, more in compensation. Compensatory Ooh, damages and expensive ruling against 3D realms related yep. to the creation of the yep, use that, of Ion Maiden logo. That'll do it. That will do it. They probably paid that and then <laughs> changed the name immediately. <laughs> yep. Yikes. Yep. Anyways, moving on, moving back to the original story. Um, so they're keeping the names. They took out the racial, uh, the racial literal racial slur, uh, fag bag. That's an awful thing. I, I guess someone just put it in there as a joke, maybe. Um, these are all things that people are using to get in the game by, like, by hacking. Nothing yeah. was actually in the game. Someone had to hack into a, a, de- a dev room to actually see this stuff. Um, it is very weird what they chose to take out and keep in. They kept okay, and then you took out Fagbag. Of course, Fagbag is yeah. an awful slur to a, a, a particular gay man. Uh, uh, the term okay is... I, I guess since Apparently it was it says, an actual error, they don't want to take... Oh, no. He yeah, said well, he removed it. So. Yeah, it says okay. It was a reference to Olay products. So I don't know if... Okay, I guess that makes yeah. sense because it's Olay. Okay. Yeah, because it says specifically the statement is referring to is a it, bottle and game that funny? displays the word okay, a reference to Olay products. However, the game also includes more specific homophobic slur. I would say since, since the whole 
awful. Yeah, it's pretty you know, much. I think it's, it's the f word, wasn't it? Yeah, like, I think it's supposed to like. Let's say there's a bar of soap, and it said instead of ole, it says okay. I, I'm thinking they're trying to be that way. Funny. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't know. That's an awful joke. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna make a joke, make it funny. Uh, you know, they're doing the right thing. They're donating to the Trevor Project, which is a great. Um, Charity, Jesus, how is I lost the the word. Lost yourself for a second. So, yeah, yeah, it's great charity. Um, it looks like they're doing everything right. I guess they don't want to push too much because they don't want to take everything out. So they're like, look, we're not taking everything out, but we'll take, of course, the obvious racial slur in there, which I can't believe may pass QA or something. I, yeah, like, Jesus. Did no one find the horrendous term on a wall? Anyways, th- I just wanted to go over that. I don't think there's much to add on that. It's it's, uh, it's a sucky story, and it looks like they're fixing it, so that's good. And I'm glad they're donating to the Trevor Projects. Great, uh, great charity. Uh, moving on, Activision lineups mean Overwatch on the Nintendo Switch is inevitable. This is over by Ford's by Dave Thier. Um, the rumor mill churned into overdrive this week when it comes to Nintendo Switch ports. A Switch case bearing the Overwatch logo and claimed to be quote officially licensed end quote showed up on a Amazon for a hot second before getting pulled, leading many to believe that it pointed to a pending release of Blizzard's Hero Shooter on Nintendo's little hybrid system. As far as rumors go, it's uh, it's the sort of thing that feels squarely within the realm of possibility, which uh, always leads fuel to the rumor fl- fires. I tend to believe it, and not just because of some errant uh, merchandise. I feel like Overwatch is going to come to Switch because it sort of has to. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I don't know about this particular switch case, but it does add another data point to a long list. And here's the thing: Activision isn't making a ton of games right now. It's still releasing the yearly Call of Duty, and it's published Sekiro Shadow Dies twice. But aside from its he- uh, leaning heavily on old games like World of Warcraft, Candy Crush Saga, and of course Overwatch, this puts an uncommon amount of pressure on those older titles to produce income for Activision, and it means that the publisher is no doubt looking for new ways to cash in. What a great way to get a fresh infusion of cash out of an older game, releasing on a new platform. It would be a great way not only to bring new players into the fold, but also wrangle some extra income out of the legions of existing players that would no doubt want to pick up a copy for portable play. It'll, ha- it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. I'm surprised it already hasn't happened. I, yeah. I mean, I guess I mean, they have busy, the knockoff like, well, version. No offense. I mean, Paladins. Uh, it's it's it was fine. You're catching flame for that. I want you to know that. Yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I mean, I've hey, never played. I've never I mean, played no offense. Paladin. I mean, I bought. I even put the. I bought it the twenty dollar one. And, mm-hmm. and I've never played it. it I played it. It, it was it fun, definitely looks but like, it is very Overwatch. It looks like discount Overwatch, and it seems like one of those things yep. where I would say that, and people's like, uh, uh, "Do you know if one was first? The off the top of your head, do you know which one came out first? I assume Overwatch. Okay, we assume. Yeah, I can look it up. Yeah. Cool story. Uh, it's, of course, coming. We'll see it. And I'm excited. Apex Legends next year to seemingly leaks ahead of Season 3. Uh, all right. This is over by US Gamer by Matthew Olson. With just over a month of Apex Legends' second season to go, hopefully we'll be hearing more soon from Respawn Entertainment about who's joining the Battle Royale freight in Kings Canyon. In the meantime, photos claim to have been leaked from a conference for GameStop managers give glimpses of what could be the new legend and new weapon slated for Season 3, a hacker known as Crypto and the Charge Rifle. Oh wow, this looks 100. Overwatch real. was first by two years, by the way. By two years, okay, so 100 yeah. percent was first. Yeah. So they might have been inspired by. I'm I'm curious. Uh, the photos posted by you uh, Reddit by user Tevis 3D appear to show a finalized character portrait of Crypto with a companion drone, as well as the charge rifle, a weapon that appeared in Titanfall and Titanfall 2. Crypto has been rumored to be a forthcoming legend since before players got their hands on any characters beyond the original eight. An identified portrait finally in the back room and it of a piece of Pathfinder concept art matches the character model associated with Crypto, originally unearthed by data miners in March. The same data mining leak uncovers season two's legend Watson months in advance. Um, this is also the same guy who was in the cinematic trailer, if you guys remember that, for season two. Mm. He, he actually like hit the hack that broke yeah. the thing. Looks cool. I'm excited for it. Um, I think I'm gonna use him. Yeah, he looks cool. Yeah, I, I like the coat. I want. Yeah. I want the coat. He, he said he has a. Dr- oh, there's the drone. Yeah, I, I can see the drone. Yeah, just Google um, Apex looks, leak, and, and it'll probably be the first the image. Drone if you're interested, looks like a little uh, Pathfinder, in a way. Oh wow, it does. You see it? Yeah, it looks like yeah. a little baby Pathfinder. That's cool. That's cool. Cool. I'm excited. Maybe this is the Can't guy who created it. Pathfinder. Because do we know Whoa. any? Do we know any origin stories for any of these people yet? No, Maybe this is what they're starting. I don't think so that'd be f- cool if they start injecting some sort of story into. Yeah, like what they do with Overwatch. You know, everybody yeah. has their own things. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077 drops binary gender options and character creator. This is over on GameStop by uh, Jordan Ramy. 
Uh, CD Projekt Red has faced several controversies with the depiction of transhumanism and gender representation in its upcoming open world action RPG, Cyberpunk 2077. However, the developer is eager to respond to fan feedback and create a more inclusive experience. In this respect, the team has reworked Cyberpunk 2077's character creator and removed the binary gender options. Quote, you know, we really want to make a video game that's really inclusive, end quote. This is by senior concept artist Martha J- uh, Junkers on in an interview with Metro. Quote, of course, if you tackle certain subjects, then you will expect people to have an opinion about it, and we respect that. And it's good that people give us feedback. In our character creation menu, for instance, compared to the last time when we now give you so many more options, for instance, you don't choose your gender anymore. You don't choose. I want a f- to be a female or male character. You now choose a body type because we want you to feel free to create a character you want. After selecting your preferred body type, you have the option to give your character one of two different voices. Quote, one that's male sounding, one that's female sounding, end quote. You can mix and match. You just need to connect them any way you want. And then you have a lot of extra skin tones and tattoos and hairstyles. So you only give people the freedom to have their own character, play the way they want to play. By providing more agency over the character's preferred gender and skin tone, CG Project Red is hoping more players are able to create the type of protagonist they want in Cyberpunk 2077. Most NPCs you meet will have an established gender and sexual orientation, as well in hopes of curating more believable in-game relationships, but the type, the team is open to further changes and won't complete that from the fans. Quote, our team is very international and very diverse, but we have asked for a lot of feedback, end quote. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. More options for the people who want that. Yeah. I, I, I like being able to, because what I'm picturing is like a slider. And oh yeah, and like it'll I'm show pictu- like yeah. the body form, whatever. Like you're either bigger or you're skinnier. Maybe it's masculine, or feminine. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Kind of like, what it looks uh, like. kind of like a triangle. So like you know, if you go. Oh, I, I wasn't picturing. I was picturing an actual slider. A triangle would well, work I much f- better. I forget which game it does it. It's probably Fallout. Maybe. It should I, be but Fallout. Yeah, it's like either uh like uh, like towards the left would be it's like, like skinny and then something. towards yeah. the right is mu- is uh your you know fatter, fatter or and then top and then is top muscles. is yeah like okay that. okay interesting i i think i i wonder how close i can get to like like male body with like feminine aspects or something like that you know like trying to make a believable person because yeah. usually i model a character creator for myself usually mm-hmm. so i try to make a a lighter version of whatever I'm playing. So, like, in Mass Effect, I make, make a... make a dude that's, like, ripped, but has, or, like, a sweet ass. Or I have fun with it, and I make... A, <laughs> I just realized what you said. <laughs> yeah, I just figured it take you too long. <laughs> sweet abs. Um, or I have fun with it, and I'll make what my child would look like between oh. me and my girlfriend. Yeah. That's what I've done once. It's just fun, so it's just fun to mess with stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <clears> but, yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to spend an hour making a creator, because that's usually what that's I do. That's what I used to do with Fallout. Uh, yeah. four Dragon Age for me. Yeah, I would just sit there and be like, "All right, I need to change the hair just a little bit." Okay. I mean, uh, if anything, it's just then, really any game like Mass Effect. I've straight Dragon up, Age, yeah. I've straight up restarted because I messed up the character. Yes. Yeah, so oh my god. I've straight up restarted. And the, yeah, your whole vision just like because nope, you're looking at you, you can't not stare at what your mistake. You're like, yep. Because yeah, once you start messing with the thing, you think it's wrong. Everything else messes up, and you're yeah. like, I gotta start over. Mm-hmm. 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 Sony is still trying to stop people from hacking the Vita for some reason. This is over uh, Ethan Gatch on Kotaku. This actually makes me literally upset. <laughs> After the publication of this... Oh, sorry. This is the update. Um, so, um, wait, hold on. As if I get this it says corrected, so there's something wrong with it. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Never mind. I didn't review this story because when I did it, it was before the correction when I reviewed the story huh. for the thing. So this whole story is kind of debunked now. So I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of the story, and then I'll tell you why it's debunked now. Okay. So essentially, um, there's a H Encore 2 released per PS Vita firmware 3.7 1. What this does is this makes an X point so you can hack the Vita to do whatever you want. You can make it play other games and stuff like that. If you guys remember that PSP could do the same thing. You could yep. put PS1, PS2 games on there. It's insane. I loved it. Uh, of course, I didn't do that because that would be illegal, Alex. Um, well, hacking the video can be used to pirate games. It can also be used to benign things like emulating old games, running third-party programs, overclocking, and even backing up saved data without needing to rely on Sony's extremely overpriced proprietary Vita memory cards. This is really cool. So that's basically the upset. And then the correction, after the publication of the story, the Vita hacker in question now says that the H Encore 2 hack, in fact, still works with the uh, 3.72 Vita firmware. Kotaku apologizes for the error, is what they say. Good for them for making an update, of course. Yeah. Um, 
very cool if it still works. <laughs> Um, now we're basically advocating for a hack, I guess. So we should probably move on or whatever. But that's that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I um, I don't know what the rules about this, but I, I mean, I messed with the PSP with that stuff when I was a kid. Yeah, that was really fun. I mean, yeah, we were kids. I yeah, mean, we were kids. So I like, think, yeah, yeah, I never pirated anything though. No, I like I, I like I put. Hold on, okay. I never pirated like a recent game. It was always like I'm gonna download an NES game. Yeah, can't man. buy NES games. So I mean, I mean Dolphin Emulator. I mean, come on, <laughs> there on you go. Computer. There you go. But no, um, I remember I tried it on the on the PSP. I put the firm jailbroke thing, whatever it was on there. It said yep. like PSP something. No, I forget what it was. I remember doing I it and never, making it look janky. I can never figure out how to use it for other stuff though. I, I think you have how to, to get the wallpapers and stuff. I just couldn't. I figure. think you have to like download like really yeah. complicated I, stuff. Yeah, it's like, I didn't know how to I'm figure it out. Smart so enough. it was still jailbroken. I know it. I know it consists of BIOS. Yes. You know that thing? Yeah, yeah, I remember those. BIOS. Yeah, it's like another version no, of No, nothing ROMs. else. No, nothing else. Yeah. But BIOS, yeah. I've heard of. Yep. Yeah, Don't BIOS, know what it is, Yeah, though. it's another version of, like, the ROMs stuff or whatever. Alex, yeah, World of Warcraft classic players are standing in long lines to finish quests. <laughs> Why? This is probably the best story I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> uh, this is by Patricia Hernandez on Polygon. Yesterday marked the release of the highly anticipated World of Warcraft classic. A recreation of the original iconic MMO. It hasn't been an entirely smooth launch. First players had to wait in queues for hours. Then, when fans finally got into service, some folks reportedly experienced lag. And once the ball got rolling, many players were surprised to find that doing early quests often meant waiting their turn. In short, the servers are so highly populated right now that completing simple starting quests requires standing in line. On social media, many classic aficionados are sharing images of long lines that look something out of a music park, not a video game. Some lines are short, while others appear to have dozens upon dozens of patient gamers. Dude, I love this story. Go over to Polygon if you want to see the pictures. People have tweets up. And they're literally, there's a, a guy who gives the quest, and there's a line that stretches to further than the screen can show you. And they one person turns the quest, leaves, next guy. Turns the quest, leaves. Like, this is this is awesome. Uh, that, that's I love crazy. when little stuff happens like this. A uh, single file line to kill. See, even this one. This is a line to kill a quest mob, which is a, just a quest oh thing God. you have to kill. So not everyone's trying to fight the thing at once. They go one at a time to kill it so they would get the proc for the kill. To kill a quest. Yeah, same thing, quest mob. Dude, these lines are long. You don't even see where it ends. Oh, my God. It's just a ri- I mean, it's ridiculous how... Like, why can't I just go up to the dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's crazy. They have names and everything. This is really cool. Glad for uh, everyone who likes World of Warcraft. Um, uh, <laughs> I love this. There's so many lines. Oh, my God. Sticky with World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft director reveals why classic server queues are still so long. Classic servers are now live, and as expected, players are crowded. But unfortunately, in a post position forums, WoW director Ian... Has Acostas has asked why Blizzard is hesitating on opening up new servers when queues to enter World of Warcraft Classics can grow into the tens of thousands. Oh my God! The reason Hazikos has Hazikotas has says is because Blizzard is prioritizing the long-term health of World of Warcraft Classic over quick fixes. We've tried to prioritize the long-term health of our realm communities. Recognizing that if we undershot the mark in terms of launch servers, we could move quickly to add additional realms in the opening hours. But if we went out too many servers weeks, months down the line, we'd have a much tougher problem to solve. Uh, Hazuki saw that there are current tools like free character transfers that can be utilized in the long term for underpopulated servers, but calls the process tremendously disruptive and something Blizzard wants to avoid. Since launch, Blizzard has released over 20 new realms, and the developers are continuing to monitor world health to jump in and open new realms if necessary. But Hazukasta says the team still waits for a realm to fill before opening a new one because the main priority is a healthy population for the long term. Interesting. So it seems like they want to not over... I think I'm understanding they don't want to overload the servers with the realms. So they want to go slower. Correct? Because I'm assuming what he means by he doesn't want to open up too many... Being now you have a scattered base because eventually they they must know people are eventually going to stop playing. Yeah. So they must want a perfect amount of servers where there's enough people on each server so things can happen. So I assume they don't want to open more servers for when people start leaving. <clears throat> everyone's scattered on 
20 different servers, yeah. but only really half of them have enough people to do stuff with. Yeah, because they don't want, like, let's say 20 servers, but only 10 of them are being used. So yeah. they'd rather have 10 and all of them are being or, used. Yeah, and they said there's character transfers, but apparently it's disruptive and they don't want to do that. So they probably just want their servers and they, they want to leave it there. It's just weird to me that, like, like are you, like, pe- what are you about to say? Are you are, you, are people <laughs> really waiting? Like yes. so so like I move my character so mm-hmm. W okay, okay I'm gonna go all, right. all computer guy all right. here. yeah W, w I know, I know where forward. that is W to move forward uh huh move a little bit to the next guy in line uh-huh. and then stand there so if I see the guy move I press W a little bit again and move mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. is this is what I'm doing yes so if I press W I can't just like move pat go through him like any other no, wild game can. that would be mean though so. People, You're uh, waiting in line so you can access the guy. It's just so twenty weird. people can't go to the quest guy because that eventually blocks your access. I'm just surprised that pe- like because you you see these people. I mean, I've seen them at, uh, in there as well. <laughs> what do you, you mean see, these like, people? No, no, like just all the characters. Around. I'm just messing around. <laughs> You'll see the main person with the quest, but then you see like ten people yeah. huddled around him. So yeah. eventually, like Destiny, the first. Yeah. Instance. Okay. Yeah. So and then you just go to the guy and press the button. Yeah. And eventually it'll be your turn. I'm surprised that's not happening. So, so it's it's crazy you how. Can, do There's that. somewhat of control, or, or what? Not control. Uh, order. Yeah, in order. this game, it's it's cool. crazy. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I like I it. Like yeah, that. I'm surprised like people respect enough an order like here. Like I'm, I, I, like I mean, it. it would be different. I think it would be different if this was World of Warcraft opening. Yeah, but I I would guesstimate almost everyone playing the game has played it an ungodly amount before. Yeah, almost everyone. Because if you're winning, in line, so they must yeah. know that like. We we're gonna waste some more time trying to get in. Yeah, we just wait in line. That's gonna be much faster. It's just it's, yeah. that's awesome, dude. It, it, I, I mean, it. yeah, I love I, it. I I'm curious on how it works though, because you make a good point. Like, can how many people can talk to the one guy? I assume more than one. So yeah, maybe that's there's, what I'm saying. Well, maybe there's five people talking to him, and then as soon as one person goes, maybe someone else walks up, or maybe it can really only be one person at a time. Yeah. Now I know for sure the quest mobs they were saying mm. mobs you know the just the things they have to spawn and kill yeah, yeah, yeah. i know that they, that you have you have to hit it first for it to count as your kill oh wow so i know for a fact they have to wait in line for that because okay. if someone if so if, if you hit it first and you come up right behind me try to hit it you can't no no no, no I, I can hit it uh-huh. but it's not going to count as a oh, kill for gotcha, me gotcha gotcha you're okay. going to get the kill for it Gotcha. So whoever procs the hit first, I'm pretty sure. Please yeah. correct me no, if I'm no, wrong. Yeah, Patreon.com, not... give us money and put it post there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can tweet at us, of course. No, yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that uh, you, you hit it once. Then if it dies, you gain it. Yeah. I'm pretty man. sure. But this is awesome. So happy for World of Warcraft players out there. It's crazy, man. Don't worry, Alex. Don't worry. We have more World of Warcraft news. Uh, Wild Classic hits 1.1 million Twitch viewers, nearly doubling Battle for Azeroth's launch. This is crazy because Battle Azeroth was the latest expansion for regular yep. World of Warcraft. This is bigger than the than the all of the, expan- yeah. the expansions of the game. This is awesome. That's basically it. I'm not going to read the whole story. It's just celebrating that that uh, they're hitting this number. Hilarious, by the way. What are, uh, I'm going to read this, but World of Warcraft has just seen its peak concurrent Twitch viewership surpass the 1.1 million mark. Um, in Bresley's post, you can see a screenshot of the Twitch views for a game at, at this time of capture at this number ahead of Grand Theft Auto V, Minecraft, and Fortnite, which were all sitting 150,000, 110,000, and 91.8,000. So Fortnite is actually below Grand Theft Auto and Minecraft. That's insane. That's insane. It's been number one for a very long time. World of Warcraft's number one, it looks like, with Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, and Fortnite. Grand Theft Auto has been out so long, and it's still up there, man. And there's this really cool thing called Twitch Tracker. You can actually click it, and you can see who who's doing what. So mm-hmm. I'm, I clicked it, and let's see. So, yeah, World of Warcraft right now is number one ranked. Live viewers is 284,000 as of oh God, yeah. um, August 28th at 9 o'clock. There's 7,781 live channels playing this God. game. Average viewers is 170,000 viewers on average for a week period. Oh, it's God. a week period. <clears throat> um, peak viewers is 1.1 still. They, so they, they probably hit peak viewership. They're probably not going to go over that. Wow, this is insane. This is really cool, though. Yeah. Twitch tracker is kind of cool. You can see, like, different games. Hours watched in a week, 28 Ooh, million. So if you hit, Jesus. So if you hit uh, games, it says most watched games on shits. Number one, WoW. Number two, Dota, League, Fortnite, Counter-Strike Go, Just Chatting, Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, Overwatch, Player Unknown Battleground. Interesting. 
Always oh, cool to wow. see numbers like yeah. that, and that's based on average viewership, not anything else. I'm surprised Dota's still going strong. Dude, Dota, people love Dota. I would have said the same thing about Dota and League. I could not get into Dota. I could, I can, I, I could mess with League. I can, I, 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 I could never, League. I couldn't mess with Dota. I can't mess with it either. I'm, I'm, I'm a fish when I play those games, dude. <laughs> I, like, uh, I might as well be telling my, my hands to dance. It doesn't. I don't know. I can't get mm. wrap my head around that Counter Strike, man. I've heard. I've heard people love that game. It's like a. I think it's like a hard. It's like PUBG in a way. I think. Yeah, it's just more of a competitive tournament based game. Yeah. Yeah. It's God. It's crazy. Assassin's Creed Odyssey first DLC is free. Um, the first DLC chapter of the Fields for Elysium is free for PS4, Xbox One, and PC from now until September first. So make sure to grab it. This is a it's good. PSA. It is free. Go download it. Yes. Um, for it is, it every console it's out for. So the consoles and PC. Go grab it. It's free. And then you can get the discounted rate of the full package for only $12.50, which is 50% off. Go grab it. Yes. 100% worth <laughs> it. Moving on to another new release, Marvel Spider-Man Game of the Year edition, available today. This is over on the PlayStation blog. Um, this is going over the, to this, I mean, I'm, you know, you should know Game of the Year editions. Now, what is especially good for this one is, I think this is $40, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah, normally when the Game of the Year comes out, it's back to 60 mm-hmm. but this one's only 40 yep, That's yeah, awesome. City Universe. Yeah, you'll get the full game and all three story chapters for $40, for thirty nine ninety nine. That is awesome. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Good, great, it's that, such a great game. That's definitely worth it. If you haven't picked up Spider-Man, you'll have every uh, thing that comes out for the game, plus the new suits and all that. God, yeah, so many suits, man. Okay, Alex. What's up? I'm going to take you on a ride. Oh, my Scrolling God. I scrolled down Twitter a few days ago. Oh, yeah, I'm going to strip. Um, I'm, going, I'm going through uh, Twitter, so okay? All right. I'm scrolling through known leaker of Smash content okay. posts a very cryptic thing. I don't know for word for word, and I couldn't find it very easily before the podcast. So right. I'm right. going to kind of tell you what it is. So he puts new character is going to be announced. I think he gave a date. I think September 11th or something like that. New character will be announced. It will be female. It will be disappointing. No one will see it coming, is what he said. That that's all he's. This gentleman or or woman has said. Mm. People have been running amok trying to figure out who this is. Alex, off the top of your head, who do you think that is? Who who would you guess? So we're disappointing uh-huh. female character. Disappointing female character. So who would you be disappointed, I guess, in Smash? It's kind of a weird thing. It sounds like who disappoints you as a female is what I'm asking you, but I'm not. <laughs> I, uh... So I saw a couple rumblings of it might be Tracer because of the Overwatch news. Huh. No one would see her coming, so maybe that's interesting. Like, maybe that's what he meant. Like No one's going to see Tracer f- coming into the game, and people yeah. maybe would get disappointed by that, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm curious. That's just a little murmuring. If you guys have any clues, tweet at me. I don't know who it could be. And guys, I want you to sit back for a second. We're going to take a quick PSA. Quick PSA. We're going to finish up the the podcast shortly with a couple of few news stories. Maybe go over a topic. But I want you to sit back, and I want you to let me inside your head. All right. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been enjoying this content, please head over to patreon.com slash Achievers. Give us a dollar. That's enough to show us that you support us. You help us out in our endeavors, and we will continue to keep making this quality content for you because i'm sure when you hear our voices you can only think quality content thank you so much head over to uh, uh youtubes and the podcast services again every friday this is where we'll be if you want to talk to us all of our socials are good at you and thousand at crazy flip scare for miss alex over there and at easy achievers for our overall uh social media post thank you so much for this quick psa back to your regularly scheduled program alex yes aladdin and Lion King are being re-released, coming to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Weird. Yeah. Did you ever mess? Did you ever mess with those? I think I played Aladdin. I didn't. I didn't on mess something. With any of this. I don't even know what I played it on, but I'm pretty sure I played it maybe on my Game Boy. Why? Like, why is it coming out? Like, do you think it's because of the I think Disney's Disney? getting serious about games. Okay. Then we can have this greater discussion after I read this. Give me okay. a second. Okay. The re-release collection featuring Disney's Aladdin and The Lion King has been confirmed. Well, that, was, right. that was a dog. You, Disney <laughs> Classic Games, Aladdin and the Lion King, a mouthful of name. <laughs> That's funny. The The title of the game is called Disney Classic Games, Aladdin and the Lion King. That is quite the name. Um, it's getting a boxed retail version for consoles in addition to digital versions. Previously rumored for release, we now have concrete details, including the trailer, uh, screenshots, and a box art. 
Fiscal releases on Switch, Xbox, PS4 are planned. Here's, uh, they have the Switch box art. It looks really cool. It, it kind of looks like a VHA step, kind of, kind of, not really, but kind of. Um, so this is the list of games in it. Now you might be asking yourself, you just said two games, right? No, there's way more than that. Mm-hmm. Disney's yeah. Aladdin, Aladdin, Sega Genesis version. Disney's Aladdin Game Boy version includes Super Game Boy version, which implies a bit more color, Super Game Boy style. Disney Aladdin Final Cut. We don't know what this is, but ask. We haven't heard back from IGN. That's, <laughs> That's funny. Hilarious. That's funny. Disney Aladdin trade show demo, a demo version, quote, that has not been publicly available since 1993, end quote. That's cool. Um, that's all of the land stuff. Now to Lion King. The Lion King Sega Genesis version, the Lion King Super Nintendo version, the Lion King Game Boy version also includes Super Game Boy version. Whoa. So it's, so it's, you're pretty much getting seven games. So I'm curious how different. Do you know how different these games are? Like I do not. I'm going to go through this gallery while we're talking, too. Um, okay. I'm curious on how different all this is. The games look good in their re-release, and it looks like you can play them pixel perfect, I think is what it's called, where you... Yeah. Put the game in perfect ratio so you can play it without messing up. Um, and it all looks good. I definitely played The Lion King, actually. I, I know that for a fact. I, I played Lion King. I might I might not have played a lot. But I'm, I definitely played Lion King because I remember this stuff. Exciting. Alex, do you care about any of this? I just, no. Because, no? I mean, okay. I, I like a lot of Lion King. I just never played these. And it's just, I mean. Good price for 30 bucks. No, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Now, Seven moving on to the bucks. greater thing. Why? Thank like you asked earlier why. Yeah. I think they're getting serious about video games. I think Disney sees Spider Man and goes, <laughs> yeah. you know, like in cartoons when their eyeballs go to money yeah. signs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we just sold 13 million units. I want to do that again. So I think they're going to start reviving stuff. They're going to make a lot more game deals because they must like that uh, cool, cool bit of royalty they're getting from PlayStation. Um, and I just think they're, we're getting more Disney games. And it's exciting. Yeah, that and the new movies came out. That too. That I'm sure that helps it, right? You, yeah. The new movies are out, so you so, have more of a. Yeah. Well, that and uh, so if these uh, this generation of kids watch these new movies, hmm. they see the games coming okay. out, and they're like, okay, well, you know. And then the dad can be like, "You don't know nothing about that. I used to play that when I was your age." Yeah, and right? the kid goes like, "Shut up, Dan!" And yeah. then they buy it for thirty bucks. The dad tries to play it, and then they just like do horribly <laughs> you're like i can't do this anymore god my eyes <laughs> give me call of duty <laughs> give me call of- i need to shoot something this is over on the verge alex fortnite star ninja signs multi-year apparel deal with adidas this is by jay peters mm. you know when you look at him man you're like you can't get richer and then he signs with adidas <laughs> i mean <laughs> hey man shout out to ninja though he's 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 making moves good hey, for him yeah flesh off of a well publicized spit from twitch streamer tyler ninja blevins today announced a partnership with adidas which the apparel company now tells the verge is a multi-year deal there aren't any shoes or apparel for sale right now but on his mixer stream blevins said i can't say specifically what is in the works with adidas but use your imagination adidas says the partnership might lead to products in either the physical or virtual world there's Interesting. Gonna, there's going to be shoes with his logo on it. I mean, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Now, I'm definitely down for some ninja shoes. I might buy them. But if the if his logo is too prominent, probably wouldn't buy you it. You the actual ninja logo? Yes. Or would, you, would, you rather, would you rather it be like the colors of his No, thing? his colors are dope. If, yeah. if there's a giant ninja sign on it, I like minimalism. I, say, I think if they're going to add the logo... It would be on the heel at the very back. And or that would be it. on the tongue. Oh, yeah, if you yeah. flip the tongue, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where that's called a tongue, right? Yeah. Can we get together with that? A lick a tongue, bad. Why is it called? Wait, lick a tongue. Okay. Yeah, Pokemon, lick a tongue. tongue. Yeah, no, I, I got the reference. That just yeah. confused me. <laughs> All right, moving on. A pair of companies signing deals with gaming stars is a relatively new phenomenon. Nike signed a deal earlier this year to make jerseys for the League of Legends Pro League in China. Well, that's cool. Which are expected to debut at the 2019 League of Legends World Championship in Paris in October. Champion and K-Swiss have also signed a pair of deals with individual team and players. Do you think that's the first time anyone has said K-Swiss without saying sarcastically? Probably. <laughs> the partnership with Adidas is far from Ninja's first with the brand. He's long partnered with Samsung and has appeared in companies' hashtag Team Galaxy ad campaign. 
promoted the Galaxy S10 exclusive K-pop themed Fortnite skin and emo and opened a Samsung made Fortnite supply drop with a Galaxy Note 9 inside. Ninja also made money from a number of other deals including a long running Red Bull sponsorship, YouTube ads, and he gets paid to play certain games including a reported $1 million for playing EA's Apex Legends at its launch earlier this year. He also just released a book. It's called Get Good. I've seen the book. It looks cool. Yeah? Yeah. Do you... You should buy that for me for Christmas. I would like to get good like Ninja. I'll think about it. Thank you. All right. If you're listening to this, <laughs> buy, buy Alex. He's not listening. Buy, buy Alex the book and ship it to him. <laughs> It'd be really funny if he gets like 10 of the, bo- <laughs> 10 of the books. <laughs> I'm going to look at these. I'm going to be like, what are you sending these? <laughs> what do I do with these? Because we're not going to remember this joke. I'm not 100% gonna... we're not going to remember this. God, so no. even if you get the books, I'm going to be like, who keeps sending these? Should we like call the police? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and then we're going to get tweets like, did you get the books? And you're I'm like, oh. I'm going to try to find like a return label. <laughs> what do I send this back to? <laughs> this has to be a mistake. Uh, and this is just a review roundup to end up the show. Astro Chain over on Metacritic is sitting on an 88, generally favored um, by about 52 critics. That's a pretty good story. A high 8. Yeah. A so far, for, I've heard it's good. Per game. And then Critic uh, Control slightly below um, 81, favored by about 43 critics. Uh, user scores for Control is 6.7, and Astro Chain user scores are not there because the game hasn't came out yet. I forgot about that. What game was it? Uh, Astro Chain. Oh, yeah. It comes out the 30th. I forgot about that. Cool. Yeah. Cool review roundup. I really like where Control's going and Astro Train is heading. My computer may, my computer's making a weird noise yeah, and I don't know why. Your computer is so loud. You need to figure out what something with yeah, that Yeah, I need to figure out. If anyone knows the computers at all, why is my laptop so loud? And don't be like snying like, because it's old. It's not that old. It's like... What year is 20, it? 2016? 2015? No, 2015. I thought 2015. 2015, 2016. One of those years. Yeah, it's not that old. Yeah. It shouldn't be sounding like a jet engine. How about that? Maybe I need to replace the fan. I don't know. Like I said, we'll just take it apart. I don't know. I don't know. Alex, let's get to the topic. Which is? What's your favorite PlayStation generation game? So we're starting with PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. Mm, This one's hard because it's been so long since I played a PS1 game. I have to remember. I'm going to say... PS4 for me is Suikoden 2. No. For PS1? Yeah. No, No, it's... Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Mm. PS2 for me is Suikoden 5. Wait, or Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, that's hard. Is it now? Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 for PS2. PS3 is Last of Us. PS4 is God of War. Boom, done. Easy. Damn. Easy. All right, PS... Well, now I'm going to move on to Xbox. The original Xbox. Go for it. Ninja um, Gaiden. Because I didn't really play anything on oh. the original Xbox. Yeah, dude. Oh my. Ninja Gaiden Xbox was it? Ninja Gaiden Black. The original Xbox was Ninja Gaiden Black. I like how your computer just like... <laughs> lower, <laughs> lowered and... Like, yeah, it's like a, yeah, lowered yeah, an did. octave. Xbox 360. What would be my favorite game on Xbox 360? I know. I got mine already on top of my head. Bioshock? I think it's mine. What's yours? Halo 3. Yeah, mine's Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, so PS One. I think this was on PS One. I believe Tomb Raider. Um, I forget which one it was, but it, I I remember specifically the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the level. If it was the first level, it's uh you you're about to like, go over like a bridge, like and there's like nothing. There's like a you're like above a mountain or something. You go this bridge. You better go to this cave, and then the ball like Indiana Jones ball comes towards you. and You gotta like run away, kind of. Like I can't remember which one this is, but I remember I played the hell out of this game. It was either that, it's either this. You making stuff up? No, I'm just messing with you. It's either because it, it's either this or uh, Crash. Okay, I can yeah. get behind that. Yeah, because a good list. PS2. Do you have any idea? PS2, Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, yeah. No, PS3. Oh, and uh, Destroy All Humans, because that's what I I play. I originally actually played it on GameCube, but it was on PS2 also. So or I, I I first played it on. So GameCube. you prefer Destroy All Humans to Kingdom Hearts two, or you just bring it up as like? A, I just bring it up that I played the heck. I out see. Of it. Okay. Yeah. PS three. Uh, ooh. Last, Last of Us. Us. Yeah, not that too. It's, it's between Last of now, Us and Uncharted three. Okay, because I was gonna say I, I first I played the Uncharted's while. Actually, yeah, I I did them on PS three. <laughs> I was thinking I played them when I did uh the remaster on PS four. But I think I borrowed your Uncharted's on PS three. 
I think so too. Yeah, so but I'm gonna say Last of Us. Yeah, and, and then Last of course God of War. Yeah, God of War. Yeah, it's just so easy. God of War. I'm sure that's a trite thing from us from the listeners. It's like, oh yeah, surprising. It's God of War. <laughs> yeah, it's just. I mean, God, it's so good. <laughs> oh God, gotta love it, Alex. We've been playing more Destiny. Why? Because well, getting a thing ready for Shadow Keep. Shadow right? Keep. Yeah, I just go over. Let's revise our what we've been playing. I think for this as we slowly go into the end of the show. Um, I've been enjoying Destiny 2 a lot. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and you want to squat up, hit us up, man. Yeah, man. Twitter. We need a, we need a raid I, team I, and I ready really, for Shadowkeep. I really want to go do that last Or if you wish. have a clan. We, want, me and Alex need somebody. Yeah, we, I, I want to go do that last ra- uh, last wish raid. We have I technically hadn't... three raids. We did Leviathan. Yes. We never did Last Wish and we never did Scourge of the Past. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yep, I thought Last Wish the, was the last one. No. Um, Wasn't there Scourge another of the past one? Is the last one. Wasn't there another one after that? Scourge of the Past? Wasn't there? I swear no. there was another one. I think there's three in total. The Menagerie is raid-like. Maybe that's, that's the thing I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. I want to do that. So if you want to do that tonight. It's kind of like the Leviathan raid, except it's like fast-paced and it's different. It's really cool. We gotta is there I gotta, a I recommended light level for that? 690. Oh, I'll be, mm, I yeah. I 690? I think so. I don't know. Just be... Um, well ratings. By the way, if you don't like, if if you if you do, if if you're clocking out of our Destiny Two talk and what we've been playing, we're going to talk a little bit more about Control Two. Um, if you're clocked out though, but uh, and want to sign off, that's perfectly fine. Uh, remember patreoncom slash for the support. Uh, shout out to our Twitter handles: uh, Avi Evie and a thousand at Crazy Philip Scatter and at Easy Achievers to hit us up if you want to talk about anything. Of course, on Instagram as well. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we're going to get back to the uh, topic on hand. Anyways, Destiny Two. Yes. Good. I'm enjoying it. Effort. It's one of those games that, like, it's it's similar to Fortnite Apex, where you stop playing, you go back, and it's like it's like riding a bike, where you're like, "All right, time to catch up." Yeah, dude, that's how I've time been to feeling. catch up. I need to get that recluse. I need to get that mountaintop. That's what we're getting, by the way, the recluse. Yep. That's why we were playing comp. Gotcha. To get that SMG. So now, since we, uh, if we keep playing to, if we get playing tonight, since we're on Brave Two, I'm on Brave Two. Will it stay there or does it restart? What do you mean? Like if I uh, since if we know, go right now and yeah, play it, no 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 you you don't decay oh you don't decay you okay, only cool. decay if you don't play for like a week okay so if we go back tonight I'll still be brave two and go into brave three yeah okay cool because no, I want, no I decay. actually want to get up to the, the the top one or the one we have to do what is it the F we the, have to get the fable fable which is after the next one we're on okay so we're on brave we'll hit heroic heroic I think it is and yeah. then it's fabled then there's mythic and legend okay. Um, but yeah, I want to go for Mountaintop. I want to go for Clues. I'm really excited about those. Um, yeah, like I said, guys, if you're looking for a raid group, we're so down. Um, Alex, let's talk about streaming for a second. All Have right. you any interest in streaming as an individual? I, I want to. Yeah. I just, I don't have the time. Yeah. I mean, I'm more resources, right, that we don't have. Yeah. I would love to stream one day. I was thinking actually the other day when I was playing Destiny, I was like, it'd be awesome if I could just put on a stream real quick, just chill, talk to people. Yeah. Relax. Play some Destiny. Did you say... I'm very interested in one day streaming our podcast, too. Yes. Which would be difficult because we'd have to, we'd have to definitely tighten up a little more because when it's live, you can't really take anything out, right? So you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Um, not that we do terrible things, by the way. We're not beating our dogs on stream like some awful people Yeah, that we found out online. Who would hit a dog? Dude, I, I don't know. I, I mean, here, I'm going to be real with you, Alex. Mm. Of course I've hit my dog before. Of course. Well, first off, I don't have a dog right now. But when in training, I do. But, like, I'm not beating them. You're just, like, doing it enough to where they know something's bad. This woman was spitting on the dog. That's, like, overkill. Crazy. Woman? I was about to say about yeah. it. So, um, did you say Crown of Sorrow for one of the raids? No, Scourge of the Past. Well, there's Last Wish... Scourge of the Past, and then after that, there's that's one called right. Crown of Sorrow. You're that's, right. I, that's why no, you're I right. Yeah, I forgot the Sorrow. It's, it's it, Sorrow. That's the latest raid. It, people call it just Sorrow. It's a. It's it released on the Penumbra expansion, and you need to be a 740 power level. Yikes. Yeah, because uh, Scourge of the Past, you need to be 640. Last Wish 550. We could do that one. Oh no, dude, we can do all of them really. Because Leviathan 300, really wow. Because I'm. Uh yeah, Leviathan's super easy now. Yeah. Um, because I mean, what? I'm seven thirty right now. You're seven hundred, right? 
um like 696 because if i put my other stuff on then i'll be at 700 but i i need better gear all i had was that salted stuff and i don't have it anymore now yeah you need to be a better gear you'll get more gear because um, they power level you to 60 well that's why i want to if you want tonight we can do uh the nightfall or the heroic just so i can see if i can get some better gear yeah that's true i just we, you can, we can start so doing powerful gear I, I need stuff. something okay um but yeah then the next one the newest one is going to be called garden of salvation yeah, that's the newest one. That's yeah. the one that looks like um, it's gonna be in the Black the Garden. Yeah, it's it's called in the it's in the Black Garden of in Mars, and it says it's a realm isolated from space and time, inhabited by the Vex. Yeah, because don't they time travel and stuff? And I think they their lore depicts them overtaking some sort of civilization or something like that. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I'm interested in what they're gonna do with Shadowkeep too, mm-hmm. story wise, because they're saying this is gonna be a major expansion rather than side content. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Jesus. I like how this, um, so with, um, you, I have this, uh, Destiny, Destinypedia. Like, I was just looking at all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, and Leviathan had two bosses, the Royal Beasts and Emperor Callus. Last Wish has four bosses. And Scourge of the Past, two bosses. Crown of Sorrow, two, two, uh, two bosses. So Last Wish has the most bosses. <laughs> Other than uh, King's Fall, if you remember that one, that was from the first Destiny game. It was mm. it's called King's Fall. It was on Dreadnought Saturn and it had one, two, three. It had five bosses. It oh. had or uh, Oryx the Tanking. King. Oh, it was the Oryx the Tanking King. Oh, that was okay. a separate. I thought that was called something else. No, so oh no, so yeah, King's Fall was the raid for the Tanking King one. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely did Tanking King raid. I beat it. We yeah, Golgoroth. Oh, yeah, I remember Golgoroth and War Priest. You remember them? Yeah. Yeah. Had to kill the War Priest in order, I think Wrath it was. Of the Machine. I don't even remember this raid. No, I didn't play that one. Oh, I, I remember we tried, but then we had, like, nobody that would do it. Yep. That's why I, I'm in the mood for a raid. That's why I want, I want to do something yeah, good. Yeah, definitely. Like, something fun. Yeah. That's why Menagerie kind of scratches that itch. Honestly. That's, that's, we, we should. We need. Do we need the six, seven people, whatever, how many we need? It match makes. Oh, really? Yeah. Match makes, because I didn't awesome. know what it was. Yeah, you have to do a a couple. <laughs> you have to do a couple quests. Yeah, it's like a chalice. You have to do things with the chalice, and then you upgrade it all the way, and then you can actually use it. Huh. So you're probably gonna have to spend today leveling the chalice up, and then you can gotcha. do it. Gotcha. So um, I mean, I'm I'm down. Yeah, no, definitely, it's fun. Um, like I said, it, it's kind of like a raid, but it's not. But it is because yeah. It's like a raid put on fast forward. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. It's yeah, because raids take like five hours. Yeah, and this only takes 40 minutes probably. 30 yeah. minutes. Maybe. Oh, wow. 30, Jesus. 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should try it. Yeah, we'll try it. Any ending thoughts for the audience, Alex? Uh, drink water. There we go. Yes. Yeah, drink I actually water. need some right now because my mouth is yeah, dry. Yeah, I'm a little dry too. I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's I'm hungry too. I'm about to go get something to eat. Hungry? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm about to go back to the house and play Destiny. Yeah, same. You know so, what I wouldn't mind? What's up? One of those guardian things. What are you talking about? Just walking around with a giant monitor. You know the vanguards. Oh, yeah. you talking about the the the, the guy the games vanguard mm-hmm. thing, the screen thing? Cross saves. We didn't talk about cross saves on the episode. They're the recommend. I we need them. Cross saves. Remember um Destiny two. Yes. Added that. That's cool. Yes. If you haven't cross save, by the way, it's really easy. Just link your stuff. Uh, the only thing that I really hope because the only so far they only showed that you only get the uh, the equipment that's I guess on the character. I guess. So or you only I, get the equipment on the character you select to be your main yeah. account. I wish. See, like I had. Me a, too. Yeah, I w- I had. Uh, I have raid gear on my other. Yeah, stuff. I had raid gear on my other on my PS4 version. I wish you can transfer that to the Xbox version. Very curious on why you can't. Like, because I would straight up delete that profile and just add everything to that. Yeah. But I'm sure there's maybe some sort of like it's just gonna currency sit there thing now. they're worried of. Yeah, it sucks. Maybe there's something they're worried of. I would love to ask them. Yeah, and that's like why? Why? Just do it. <laughs> just just do it. I mean, right. It'd be awesome. That's us for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to go through the spiel one more time if you guys can suffer through it. Again, if you're a freeloader, please thumbs us up. Give us five stars. Give us all the stars. Give us the five hearts. I don't know. Whatever you're listening on, whatever sort of thing you must review us on, please review us the highest. If you like our content, head over to patreon.com slash for a dollar. You get early, uh, you get not early access, sorry. For a dollar, you get 
exclusive Patreons every month. You get $5, gets you all of our episodes early. $10, sorry, $20 gets you uh, your name right on the show. Thank you so much. Nice Hit us up on our socials at EVM1000, at Crazy Flip Skater, and at Easy Achievers. Something to ponder on while we get off. Should Destiny have a trade mechanic? Ooh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I've yeah, never just, thought about it. Yeah, just think about that. And God, that would be abused and maybe so we, much. Exactly. And we should talk, we could, we'll talk about more about that in okay. the next one. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, right? Should Destiny have a trade mechanic? Have a good one. Y'all have a good one.